I've been told, I've been ordered by the seal to read a passage to you. It says, Colonel Washington appears at Congress in his uniform, and by his great experience and abilities in military matters, is of much service to us. Oh, that I were a soldier. I will be. I'm reading military books. Everyone must, and I will, and I shall be a soldier in any way that I can. John Adams, in a letter to Abigail Adams, May 29th, 1775. I think what Benjamin is trying to tell you to do is read up and be a soldier in your own mind, and that deals with a little bit of what I'm going to talk to you about today. My name is Stephanie Scruggs. Some of you remember me from when I was the Florida director of the 912 Project. Many of you know me now as the national co-chair of the 912 Project. I actually have, what, we get, we get two claps for the national? Well, you like this one. There we go, Michael Milhound, my favorite person in the room right now. Um, I have a new title. I'm the executive director of the 912 PAC. The 912 PAC was formed in 2009 to bring the nine principles and 12 values to politics. As many of you know, the national organization on the 912 has always shied away from politics. They asked me to take over, this is a separate organization by the way, the 912 PAC. They asked me to take over quite recently and I agreed. The reason I agreed is because I'm done playing nice. Yeah. I've had a reputation in this movement of being a cat herder. I don't want to be a cat herder anymore. I want to be a lion tamer. I want to be a pipe hitter because I'm tired of losing. Yeah. Are you tired of losing? Yeah. Good. You're going to quit clapping in a minute when I tell you what I have to tell you. <laughs> I'm getting my whip. The things I'm going to tell you today you're probably not going to like because they're going to hurt. And some of you are going to feel like you've been smacked in the face, and you have, or you will be in a minute. And I deserve it just as much as anyone else. So what I'm going to tell you today, please don't think that I count myself separate from any of the things I'm going to say. But here's the fact. We're losing, and it's our fault. It is all our fault. It is not because we've been, simply because we've been asleep for the last 40 years. It's because we spend all of our time sitting around bitching about each other. Yeah. yeah. I am so tired of watching the members of our own movement tear each other apart. My issue is better than her issue. Focus on me. Focus on me. My organization's smarter than your organization. Follow me. Every day I hear something about umbrella organizations. We all need to work together, except my organization and issue must be the central issue. You just have to come to me and focus on it. Wrong! Doesn't work that way. You know why the left wins? Because they get it. When you fight each other, you lose. I don't care if you're talking about taxes or the economy or healthcare or anything else. Those are little bitty details. There is one issue, only one issue. It is liberty. Yes. Focus on the goal. Stop infighting. The left wins because PETA doesn't argue with the gay marriage people. The tree huggers don't care what healthcare is doing. They're not gonna sit around and complain. Oh no, the boys are wearing pink again and we don't disagree with it. We want them all to work on saving a tree. No, they focus on getting Marxism shoved down the throats of this country. And if you want to win, you need to focus on shoving liberty down the throats of this country as our founding fathers intended. Period. Stop fighting. I don't care if you like each other, you work together. Alan West, like him or love him, and I don't want to hear any complaints about him afterwards, I got my issues with him too, but like him or love him, he has a very good statement and he's right, and he understands it from a military perspective, which is, you go to war with the army you have. Not the perfect army. It's never going to be perfect. We're always going to disagree. We are at war. We're just not shooting. Thank God I have kids and I don't want them getting shot crossing a bread line. We need to strategize. I'm not telling you guys to drop whatever your interest is and follow somebody else. I'm telling you guys to focus. Continue working on what you know best, but don't shoot down the other guy in the room just because he's not working on your issue. And 
it's not just the issues. We rip candidates apart as well. I have news for you. The candidate that votes your way 88% of the time and has a million bucks in the bank, you get behind him. Because the guy with a thousand bucks in the bank, even though he says everything right all the time, except when the session ends and you're at a political function and he's drop dead drunk, married by the way, and hitting on every woman in the room, vulgarly, yeah, don't get behind that guy because even by some God-given miracle that he wins, he'll be laughed out of Washington and he'll never do a thing for you. Use your head. I don't agree with Marco Rubio 100% of the time, but he's the third most conservative voter in the Senate. Why would I remove that? Like him or leave him? There's always gonna be issues. And, and by the way, I'm not pitching for Marco Rubio here. My, can, my PAC only handles legislation. I, I hate politicians. Because they will always lie to you. Yeah. <laughs> always. Because if they don't lie to you to get in office, once they get in office, they'll lie to you to stay there. I'm not calling Marco a liar, just making that clear since this is being video recorded. Marco Rubio is actually a good man. But there are a lot of candidates like that. We spend all of our time ripping them apart. <laughs> Why is Bill Nelson still our senator? Yeah. Because we ripped apart every single other candidate. I was on those calls. And if you remember, for those of you who were on the last call in April, I believe it was, I chewed a whole lot of asses that day, didn't I? Who was on that call? Nobody said, you're going to admit to it. I love you, right? But, yeah. Connie Mack. A lot of people have called him a carpetbagger. Whether I agree or not, that's fine. Lemieux. He doesn't vote our way. All the others that were mentioned. Okay, they all had issues. But instead of figuring out who we could get behind and make sure beat Bill Nelson, we sat here going, Max better, Lemieux's better, so-and-so's better, Elena's better, and none of them got any money. Meanwhile, Bill Nelson had 10 million bucks in the bank and we lost, and we've got this gigantic progressive sitting in our seat in Florida. We did that to ourselves. Stop it. I got little kids, so I've got the mommy voice on right now, and I apologize to my elders. I know I'm supposed to be polite to you, but stop it! I don't give spankings to people older than me. I'm just pointing that out. <laughs> you know I shouldn't have said that. I was going to get trouble. Whoa, okay. I don't have those heels on today, do I? Here is my point. We need to focus, okay? Because the thing is, liberty is the only issue. Only issue. The First Amendment, all five planks of the First Amendment are dead. They are gone. There's no freedom of speech anymore. Ask the reporters that have been run out of the White House press room and shoved off newspapers. There's no freedom to assemble anymore. Take a look at what's in the NDAA bill. You can now be arrested for holding a sign on a street corner outside Washington, D.C. because you might get in a congressman's way. I'm sorry, I have a tendency to get in the way of my employees. And make no mistake, they are your employees. All the five planks of the First Amendment are gone. The Tenth Amendment? That one's dead too. States' rights? How's that health care working out for you? Hmm? And the Ninth Amendment? The Ninth Amendment is the single most important amendment in the entire Constitution. Who can tell me what it says? Crickets, crickets, crickets. My ancestor, George, George Mason, wrote the Tenth Amendment first. And he realized that it was not strong enough, so he wrote the Ninth Amendment. What the Ninth Amendment says is, yep, we're going to give the states these things that are not reserved to the Fed. The Ninth Amendment says that every other right is reserved to the people. Make no mistake, your state can be every bit as tyrannical as your federal government. That's why the Ninth Amendment was written. And yet, we've lost that one too. Pay your fines, kids. Mama Healthcare won't take everything else. And then the last amendment. It wasn't meant to be the most important amendment. It was meant to be the security blanket. The second amendment. The amendment that was to be used when all of the other amendments were gone. And actually, that's not even really how it was designed. It was designed to ensure that the, all the other amendments would never be taken away. And yet we are losing that one too. And we are losing it because we cannot get our stuff together. 
There is one and only re one reason why Barack Obama, Eric Holder, and Dianne Feinstein feel comfortable enough to try and take away our weapons. Because they know they can. Yes. We're all gonna sit around on Facebook and trade pretty pictures. How many of you are on Facebook? Okay. Let me tell you something. Next time you pass a pretty picture, attach an action item to it. Yes. Otherwise they're just cartoons and you might as well be reading the Sunday funnies. <laughs> the more effective thing you can do is put it up there and say, take this picture and plaster it all over the walls of your local congressman's office, show up in person and say, see this? This is what's going on. You need to stop it because I pay your salary. Woo! You work for us. This is our country. We expect you to do your job. Yeah. Stop doing things that are ineffective. Okay? Twitter and Facebook are unbelievably important. I'm not knocking them. It's how we use them that needs to sharpen. 88% of people between the ages of 18 and 41 years old get 75% of their news and information from Facebook and from Twitter, okay? So your kids and your grandkids, they're not reading the paper, they're not watching the news, they're watching Facebook and Twitter, so take some classes, learn how to utilize it better, and make sure that everything you do on there includes an action item. Every one of those pictures, the things you really want to get done, action, action, action. Otherwise, it's just Sunday comics. So, find things you can do. Stop fighting is the number one thing. The left never does it that way. When you look at the Tides Foundation, everybody talks about umbrella organizations. We need an umbrella organization, but it's got to be founded by mine. It's got to be based on this issue. That's not true. If you look at it, the Tides Foundation is the perfect umbrella organization because they don't give a damn what their people do as long as they do it for the greater good. They're just the money holders, and they make sure all the other organizations work together and play together nicely. Whether they agree or not, the end goal is Marxism, and we're almost there. Our end goal is liberty, and we must maintain it. And right now, before that is all lost, we must keep our weapons. Benjamin Smith made an excellent point, and I want to reiterate it. The magazine ban isn't going to help anything. First of all, the quote-unquote assault weapons, of which I own many, I refer to mine as defense weapons. I'm not going to shoot first, but I'll damn sure make sure you go down first. <laughs> Doesn't matter how big that mag is. The worst massacre in our history, the Cho murders at Virginia Tech. He had small mags. Magazines, for those of you who are not gun enthusiasts, are those little packages that the ammunition goes in, right? And how many you can have in once. He only had five to 10 round clip magazines in there, okay? He was just reloading. An experienced shooter, drop it, pop it, drop it, pop it, drop it, pop it. I can reload as many times as I want. It really doesn't matter if I have a 30 round bag in there or three 10 round mags, if I know what I'm doing. The whole point is, is to start limiting, okay? Now here's where the handgun ban, and this is where you need to start knowing your facts, because this is part of how we have to work together. You need to know your facts and start arguing with people. What all of the people sitting around watching Dancing with the Stars don't know is that that gun, that magazine ban restriction in New York City is going to ban 75% of all handguns. I can't remember the last time I saw a handgun that only had seven rounds. Ten is the standard. I've been running around for the last two months buying as many mags as I can, extra mags for my guns. Slides, parts, everything else. Oh, and for the camera and Janet Napolitano, I don't actually own any guns. I just happen to like to shop a lot. I don't own any. God bless Florida for not having gun registration. So it's gonna, it really is a handgun ban because they're looking for ways that the ignorant, uneducated public does not understand talking about mag sizes, talking about all these different things in how to remove these. Basically, Feinstein makes it, and she did a very good thing, she makes it sound like the big scary weapons, those military weapons. 
like the reason I shoot an AR-15 is because I'm not some crazy woman who's going to go out and like Joan of Arc in a field of flames. I own an a I I enjoy shooting an AR-15. Let me rephrase that. I grew up hunting. Your average rifle kicks a woman like a mule in the shoulder. We girls don't like to get kicked in the shoulder by mules. An AR-15 doesn't kick. An AR-15 is very easy to sight in. If I have my nose on the charger handle, I know I have my weapon in the correct position. AR-15s were created for grunts who going into the military had probably never shot anything before in their life, didn't really know how to use a weapon well, and it's easy. It's easy to clean, it's virtually indestructible. And so that's what also makes it a great weapon for hunting for women, right? But by the same measure, we're kind of going off in the weeds here. They're trying to take these things away. They're making it harder for women, they're making it harder for all of us, but their point, make no mistake, is to completely disarm us in the end. And Feinstein admitted that in Congress last week, okay? So we need to stop allowing them to do this to us. And the only way we can stop, whether they're taking our guns, whether they're taking our freedom of speech, our freedom of press, our freedom to move about this country freely, they're taking it all away from us because we spend our time fighting. Focus on one thing, one thing only, liberty. Quit bitching at each other, quit fighting at e with each other. Quit knocking down the co politicians that are doing your way 85% of the time. Hell, if they're even doing 75% of the time, get behind them. Because I want to win. I don't want my kids to be slaves. Do you want your kids to be slaves? No. no. Really, that's all you got? Do you want your kids to be slaves? No. Much better. Get your asses out there and fight. Yeah.